We are going to take a formal approach to defining our Boolean functions and then later we will simplify our notation a little bit. But starting this formal approach, let us define the lattice exponent. So let C be a subset of B, which in turn is the set of 0 and 1. Then the lattice exponent Xc is defined as Xc equals 1 if X is in the set C and it will equal to 0 if X is not in the set C. In other words, if we have the lattice exponent x1 here, this will always be equal to the value of x, because if x is a 0, 0 will not be in this set which consists of 1, but if x is 1, 1 will be in this set which consists of a 1. So the lattice exponent here, x and 1, will always take the value of x. If we instead had have the lattice exponent x0 here, this will always be equal to the complement of x. Because if x is a 1, then 1 will not be in this set, so we will have 0. If x is 0, 0 will be in this set, so we will have 1. So this lattice exponent is the complement of x. If we have the lattice exponent x with a b here, where b is the set of both 0 and 1, this will always take the value 1, because regardless if x is 0 or 1, 0 or 1 will always belong to this set b. So this will always take the value 1. And finally, the lattice exponent denoted as x with the empty set here will always take the value 0, because regardless if x is 0 or 1, this 0 or 1 will never belong to the empty set, so we always have a 0. We will also define cubes and cube functions. So the vector c, which is c1 to cn, where each of the entries will be either the empty set, the set consisting of 0, 1 or b, this will describe a cube in the n-dimensional space that we have denoted bn. The corresponding cube function will now be formed using our n-dimensional space and it is formed using an AND product of our lattice exponents. So the cube function here will be an AND product of factors that are either xi or xi prime and it will have output 1 inside the cube and it will have output 0 outside the cube. So let us look at an example of this. So let us define our cube that we denote by C as the n-dimensional space where the first dimension will take the values 0 and 1, the second dimension will take the value 0 and the third dimension will take the value 1. And this we can also write as b, 0, and 1. Where all of these are actually sets, but we're going to simplify the notation a little bit, and we just write b, 0, and 1 in this case. The corresponding cube function here we can write as this, where we have c indicated by b, 0, and 1, and this is in the three-dimensional space with the variables x1, x2, and x3. So this b here will correspond to x1, this 0 will correspond to x2, and this 1 will correspond to x3. So this we can now write as x1 with b and x2 with a 0 and x3 with a 1 here. So these are now our lattice exponents. So this is 1, this is 1, and this is 1 lattice exponent. And looking at the lattice exponent, x1 with b here, it will always be a 1. If we have a 0 that we have in the case with x2, this will be x2 prime and for x3 we will have just x3 since we have a 1 up here. 
and this can just be simplified as x2 prime x3 where we take this and here and we just write it as a multiplication just for simplicity again and let us also write the truth table for this function so we can see how what we have done now with the cube functions will correspond to the truth table so here we have the cube function as our output we enumerate our different inputs in the same way as we have done before we have all the combinations of the inputs and now we can see here that in our first dimension that we have represented with the variable x1 we have b which consists of both zeros and ones so x1 can be both zero and one however x2 must be a zero and x3 must be a one so what do we have well x2 must be zero x3 must be one we have this here and we have it also here and it doesn't matter what x1 is because it can be both 0 and 1 so in this case we have a 1 here we have a 1 here and we will have a 0 in all the other rows of the truth table 